Hello, I'm Dr. Rob Tudor, Director of Vocal Activities at Shepherd University in Shepherdstown, West Virginia. My colleagues and I have developed a series of brief videos introducing different aspects of how to help you become a better, more confident singer, from posture and breath and breath management and resonance, to include as well how to help you prepare for a college audition. My video is on posture for singing. Hopefully there'll be some new information for you to consider and incorporate into your singing and uh, help you become a better singer for your lifelong pursuit of singing. I'm gonna share my screen now and move this. I made this video once before and cut off half my body during the entire time. <laughs> so again, I'm Dr. Rob Tudor, Director of Vocal Activities at Shepherd University. And I'm gonna click on this next. So posture for singing is the topic. I'm going to use, refer to a lot, to the diagnosis and correction of vocal faults. Now it is a book that I used uh, yeah, as an undergraduate student and a graduate student in vocal pedagogy, it is an excellent resource. It's, um, it's proven to be an excellent resource to return to many times in my career. Uh, a lot of my voice colleagues have this book. It's a great way. Um, so a lot of people have also looked at Richard Miller's Structure of Singing, but this is an excellent introductory book and a source to go back to repeatedly to sort of simplify the, uh, the process of teaching singing, healthy singing, and diagnosing and correcting vocal faults. Why defend good posture? Why even bother? Well, because the body functions best when the skeleton and the muscles are doing what they're supposed to do. The skeleton offers support, protection, and shape to the body, and the muscles provide movement and assist in positioning the body. The breathing mechanism, the, 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 the muscles that hold the, uh, that control the, uh, the exhale, uh, the, the rib muscles, the intercostals, the, the abdominal muscles, the diaphragm muscles, all the ones involved in, in breath management, they function best when you can move in air in and out of the body freely and efficiently. The vibrator, the larynx, and the resonators, the pharynx, the pharynx, the oropharynx, and the nasopharynx of the vocal instrument, they function best when it's easier to start phonation and tune when the vocal mechanism is in proper alignment and unnecessary tension is eliminated. The singer functions best when good posture habits are established. It feels comfortable. It promotes confidence and well-being when practiced and established good habits. The audience functions best when they see relaxed performer, uh, excuse me, a relaxed performer on stage because a relaxed performer is an engaged performer. The general health of the individual can be benefited by good posture, good circulation, and less tension and fatigue. So, what is good posture? What does it look like for singing? The feet should be evenly distributed and one foot slightly in front of the other. Now this is uh, a sketch that I've taken from the, um, from the internet. It doesn't show one foot slightly in front of the other, but it does show good proper alignment. As if you think from the base of, uh, of your feet all the way through the body that there's energy going through the top. The difference in posture for singing, if they were to draw this, is one foot would be slightly forward and one foot would also, the weight would be slightly forward, okay? So the weight should be evenly distributed, one foot slightly in front of the other and weight slightly forward on the balls of the feet. Not up off the heels, but slightly forward on the balls of the feet. Legs, relaxed but strong, ready to move at any time. Knees, loose and ready to move. Don't lock your knees. Your hips and butt up. A line, the butt tucked slightly under. Abdomen, the lower abdomen gently held in. The upper abdomen should be free to move at all times as it works with air management. My colleague will talk more about breath management later on. Oh, for some reason, this has gone on. I don't want it to. There we go. Back, stand as tall as you can. Imagine the tailbone is lower than you think it is. Think of straightening the small of your back. Okay, so if I'm standing back here to show you, if I'm standing with good posture for singing, my feet are shoulder width apart, one foot is slightly in front of the other, and my weight is slightly forward, okay? I'm thinking about being energized from the base of the spine and my crown of my head. My legs are relaxed but strong. My knees are loose and ready to move. My hips and buttocks are aligned. My butt is, butt is tucked under slightly. My abdomen, lower abdomen, I breathe in and then I engage muscles 
which, you can, which my colleague will deal with in breath management. And then back, I stand as tall as I can, imagining my tailbone is a little bit lower than I think it is, and I think of straightening the small of my back, and then I energize through the crown of my head. The chest should be comfortably high, but not forced into that position. Do it with your brain. It should be there before you breathe or sing. So if I'm breathing for singing, I'm gonna go, right? Should remain stable as you breathe and sing. Let thoughts, not muscles, keep your chest up. The shoulders should be gently rolled, rolled back and then allowed to settle in their sockets. They shouldn't move while they're breathing, but they should feel free to move if you want to gesture. Feeling of released tension. Arms should hang freely. Clenching the hands or arms can cause tension to the whole body. And so I like when I sing, I always sing with the, my middle fingers touching the seams of my pants. Um, I do gesture when I sing, but it always returns to the seams of my pants because my shoulders are relaxed back and down. I don't want to roll over my jacket, do I? The head should be directly in line with the rest of the body, should not tilt forward, shouldn't tilt back. I just keep the chin level and the eyes level. Does it mean that I can't look around when I sing? No, but everything is balanced, thinking about being aligned this way. Okay, well, sitting for singing, the posture is the same from the hips up as it is for standing. Uh, the chest is open and I always sit forward on my seat when I sing. I never sit back. Actually, I sit forward on my seat all the time so that there's a nice curvature in the bottom of my back. It relieves back, uh, it, it prevents back tension. Thoughts related to posture are about alignment and tension. Let's talk about those, right? So, alignment checklist. Is your, health tilt, your head tilted to the right or to the left? Front or back? Look and see. Is it, is it comfortably uh, energized off, uh, through, off the top of your spine and resting on your shoulders and nicely balanced? Or is it pulled to one side? Is your chin too high or too low? When you go up for a high note, do you do this? If you do, it's unnecessary tension. Also, it causes tension in the small of your neck. Raise shoulders. Do you have one higher than the other? Some people do when they sing. Slumping posture with a collapsed chest. We call that like that, right? And sometimes if you see somebody breathe when they sing and they go, This is a clavicle right here. We call that clavicular breathing or high chest breathing. Protruding, protruding abdomen or buttocks. Too much curvature of the back. Again, these are all extremes. Knees pulled back too far. That means your muscles are engaged in your quads and you're dealing with circulation problems and unnecessary tension. Feet are too far apart or too close together, okay? To correct posture faults, well, I always incorporate um, stretching into all of my choral uh, warmups and my uh, voice teaching warmups. Directors, call attention to it. Have your students practice in front of a mirror, in front of the teaching studio, or in front of the choral room. Guide them to experience healthy, balanced, energized posture, absent of excessive tension. Just print out what I have here, or, or I'll send you my notes. It's, 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 not, it's not my stuff. I've taken it from, uh, from vocal pedagogy texts. And just guide them through experiencing things. If that fails, Guide them through gentle, appropriate physical manipulation. Have them place their hands on the back of their own necks and jut their chins out and feel when the muscles are tight. Have them stand with their feet completely parallel in a energized posture. And then have them place their hands on the small of their back and say, do you feel that tension? Now put one foot slightly forward and watch how it disappears. Students, why don't we experience what it feels like to have our hips fluid and our knees fluid? Bring them aware of that. Reinforce that over and over again. And finally, have them teach it to each other and then have them explain it to you. If they can teach it to each other and explain it clearly, that means they understand it. If they can't explain it clearly and teach it to each other, it means they can't teach it to themselves or remind themselves of it when they're in your rehearsal. So, Corrective procedures for tension in the legs, obviously stretch your legs. There's nothing wrong with stretching like you're going for a run, especially if you're nervous because the legs are going to tighten up, the large muscles are going to tighten up. Stretch the big muscles. Be aware that the legs are a tension trouble spot and keep them free and flexible. The quads respond to anxiety by tightening. So stretch them. Keep the knees moving and unlocked. 
other tension-related faults. Look, I'm with my face right there over the cat. I don't know if that'll show in the video. Um, other tension-related faults. Faults can cause, um, they can be found in these areas. You can have tension in the head. Um, you can have tension in the jaw, in the chest, tightness in the chest, in the abdomen. Practice low centered breathing. You can have tension in the hands and the arms. Do you make fists when you sing? The lips even, I've seen quivering in the lips. The jaw, the tongue, that's a big one. It's related to a lot of things. And the front of the throat, locate the tension, determine the cause, do relaxation techniques, and do not give up on it. We spend years stripping away tension, and then every time we strip away tension, we go, oh, look, now that I don't have to deal with that anymore, I've discovered something else. And it's, it's that it was there all along. It was a complementary tension. So as you strip away tensions, hopefully you'll become aware of things that you weren't aware of before and have students sing while they're moving. The last thing I want to tell you about is Alexander Technique. I'm not going to go into great details about it because I am not a certified Alexander person, but I have a lot of friends who have used it and I've attended workshops and had different Alexander techniques, um, awareness techniques uh, applied while I was in the workshop. It's a great way to feel better and move in a more relaxed and comfortable way, the way nature intended. Uh, the teacher helps you identify and lose, harm, uh, lose harmful habits that have built up over a lifetime of stress and you learn to move more freely. It's there for you if you're ready to feel more comfortable in your own body. Well, who uses it? Well, let's talk about that. If you suffer from repetitive strain injury or carpal tunnel syndrome, if you have a backache or stiff neck and shoulders, if you become uncomfortable in sitting at your computer for long periods of time, we're all doing that during the pandemic. If you're a singer, musician, actor, dancer, or athlete, and you feel that you're not performing at your full potential, a lot of my friends are artists, uh, musicians, actors, dancers, and such. Um, I don't know that I have any, no, I don't have any professional athlete friends, <laughs> but I have a lot of friends who, who do a, um, play basketball and such. And, um, and often if they uh, suffer an energy, or an injury, especially dancers, they will um, get involved with Alexander Technique to become aware. There's also something called Feldenkrais method. There are a lot of different methods out there, um, but I do know about Feldenkrais and Alexander and their great approaches to, it's all about identifying the way that your body functions, becoming mentally and physically aware of it, and finding a more efficient use of the muscles, of the structure of the body to eliminate tension. So, if you're wondering why I had my head in the center of the screen, it's because I had to record this entire thing twice. Hopefully my head isn't cut off on this. It was up in the upper right-hand corner, and then all that was there for me before was this. I'm Dr. Rob Tudor, Director of Vocal Activities at Shepherd University. I thank you for your time and watching this, and I hope it was helpful. Take care.